bless you abundantly uh, in this uh, house of peace this is the pure river of the water of life that's the name of this ministry the pure river of the water of life and i believe that the lord is going to speak to you today uh, we are a house of peace here in lubbock and i believe that the lord is going to bless somebody today in this teaching we're going to have a chance to worship together uh, here and online there's no distance in the spirit and i believe the holy spirit is going to work with each and every one of us even as we worship as we honor and glorify God. Hallelujah. Praise the King of Glory. The topic today is why do we congregate as a church? Why do we have to congregate as a church? Now this is online, but we as believers must congregate in a place together with other believers. Now, there's no distance in the spirit without a doubt. But there is something that is different when you congregate with other believers physically in a physical place and not that we worship the building no we worship god and we are temples of the holy spirit so there's a reason why uh, the scripture calls for us to congregate to gather so i'm going to start with uh, uh, hebrews 10 verse 25 but before we go there this ministry is called the pure river of the water of life and in Revelation 22, uh, that is the reason why this ministry is called the Pure River of the Water of Life Ministry. It is a ministry that is completely under the leadership of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Uh, obviously, under God. Listen to verse 22, rather, uh, chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me, this is John the Revelator, who saw this in heaven in the third heaven and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of god and of the lamb so right there the river of water of life is the holy spirit that comes from the throne of god and the lamb of god that is seated at the right hand of god and so we minister in the spirit uh, as the Holy Spirit leads, we pray in the Spirit, we believe in the spiritual gifts, all the spiritual gifts, the nine spiritual gifts. We believe in all the fivefold ministry gifts. And we believe that it's the person of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ because of the finished work of Christ on the cross that helps us to bear fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, not believe that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to somebody today. So why do we congregate as a church? That is the topic today. Uh, and the introduction is in Hebrews. If you go to the letter of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25. If you have your Bibles, open with me. In the letter to the Hebrews, and that is chapter 10, verse 25. If you're there, say Amen. I didn't get any Amen. <laughs> Are you there? Those of you online, uh, please open your Bibles on Hebrews chapter in Hebrews chapter ten, verse specific verse is verse twenty-five. Verse twenty-five. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, as we go into the Word, I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for your loving kindness and for your tender mercies, which endure forever. For each and every one that is going to listen to this message, that even though there is no distance in the Spirit, King of Glory, uh, even this you recognize, Lord, as a type of um, uh, congregation, a type of gathering. But unlike gathering in the physical place and lord we thank you that you've given us these portals to be able to share the gospel that you've given us this media social media to share the gospel and we thank you heavenly father we thank you jesus for the sacrifice that you made on the cross as the lamb without spot or blemish we give you thanks and praise jesus that you're going to speak to your people 
in Jesus mighty name Holy Spirit that you would open the eyes of our understanding each and every one in Jesus mighty name and everybody say Amen. so the scripture says in Hebrews 10 verse 25 that not forsaking the assembling the word there is assembling to assemble to gather together same thing as congregate to congregate together now somebody may say oh well but we are together in the spirit and you know i'm here i'm there i'm in my living room i'm all over across uh, um the world but that's not the same thing again as gathering in a physical place it is very important as uh, the body of believers to gather in a physical place um and there's a reason why god does it that way as we're going to learn amen so not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another right there and so much the more as you see the day approaching hallelujah somebody so in other words the bible here from the word of god is ex really calling for us to not forsake the assembling of the saints of ourselves those who believe that when believers come together there's something that happens there's something that the holy spirit does very different from receiving online so if you're listening and you are online i implore you to get a church where you gather in your city in your uh, uh nation wherever you you are right now don't be comfortable in the living room and uh, receiving on your phone or online yes this is a good uh, um, way to share the gospel and i understand there are some people who are in homes in and in, in places of work where they they work from home and they are confined in those places they do not have a day off to go and uh, and, 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 and congregate that is understandable but if you have access to a church and I'm talking about a Holy Spirit filled church that believes in all the things that I just spoke about the spiritual gifts believes in the spiritual gifts believes in Jesus Christ that's the foundation believes in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the one who gives the gifts the Holy Spirit one with the Father through Christ gives the spiritual gifts amen and so that church must believe in christ today there's so many churches out there that call themselves churches that even certain satanic churches uh, uh you know Satan also has a church i don't know what kind of church that is so the definition of a church is one that is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and with jesus christ as the chief cornerstone that is the true house of god and believes in all the spiritual gifts believes in the fivefold ministry and believes in walking upon the leadership of the holy spirit with jesus christ as the head of the church amen in ephesians 4 verse 11 to 12 it says and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists so who is he who gave some to be apostles that is jesus christ our lord and our savior some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists so those are ministry gifts spiritual gifts of how we minister so when we going back to the topic why do we congregate as a church the purpose of congregating as a church is for all these ministry gifts to be used for the body of Christ to grow and we're gonna go deeper into that so and he himself gave some to be apostles some some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping this is in Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 12 for the equipping of the Saints right there so why do we gather in church well that we may be equipped god has given us five ministry gifts for that very purpose that we may be equipped as saints for what 
for the work of ministry each and every one of us have a specific ministry you have a specific ministry and some of you have even been called in those those very fivefold ministry gifts but you do not even know so when you have apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers together it is for the purpose of equipping all the saints for the work of ministry and for the edifying of the body of christ so right there for the equipping of the saints and for the edifying of the body of christ what is to edify to edify is to encourage to nurture to 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 to, to nurture that we may grow praise the king of glory hallelujah and so that's why we do congregate now you cannot get enough when you're online that's the reason why uh receiving online is not enough because everyone has uh, someone who may be ministering may be a teacher so you don't have the apostolic uh, or the prophetic or even the pastoral you may be called to be an evangelist you need to hear from an evangelist so that's why we need to congregate together because each and every one of us have different gifts amen all of us have different gifts and the reason we congregate together is that we may tap into each other's gifts praise the king of glory now they are leaders the fivefold ministry uh gifts uh leadership gifts and those gifts are to lead others not everybody is called to the fivefold ministry so some people are called to be businessmen some people are called to be farmers others are called to be even doctors some may be called to be nurse uh, to be nurses some may be called to be different disciplines out there but for the support of the work of the kingdom of god amen and so what god does is to equip you as a believer to be blessed in that area where the lord has called you amen and that's the purpose of the fivefold ministry Again, not everyone is called in that fivefold ministry, but those that have been called, the purpose is for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen? And we thank God for those gifts. So what are the benefits of assembling? So we're going to go deeper into the benefits of assembling. But before we go to the benefits of assembling, I want us to... So take some time to just worship worship Jesus Christ and we preach Christ him crucified and raised from the dead in this ministry the Bible declares that uh, Jesus Christ became a curse for cursed is the one who is hung on the tree on the cross Jesus Christ became a curse why? that your sins and my sins may be forgiven that we may receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith all who believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came from our Heavenly Father. The Bible declares upon the Word of God. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him may not perish but have everlasting life. Right there. So it is only through Christ that we are reconciled to the Heavenly Father. That's how we have everlasting life and came from the Heavenly Father, our God. And died on the cross for your sins and my sins. That when we repent, when we turn away from our sins, those sins are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. Those sins are forgiven. And when we believe, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And I pray that the Holy Spirit is already working in you, speaking to you even as we share. And so my friend, we worship Jesus Christ. We're going to go deeper into the teaching. Uh, let's first worship. And then if you are listening and you have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior yet, do not wait, my friend. In Hebrews 10, 25, where we read, it says, I'm going to repeat that, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching what is that day the day is the day when jesus christ is going to return are you going to be ready will you have received christ as your personal lord and savior because the bible is very clear that 
anyone who has not received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, who is not born again, will not be a part of the kingdom of God. In Jesus Christ's own words, saying that unless one is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born of water and spirit, capital S. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. As a matter of fact, before anything, I want us to start by everyone, anyone who is not yet born again. We're going to lead you to Christ so that you worship knowing who you are worshiping. Praise God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross for your sins and my sins. That we may receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. That we may be blessed. That we may be healed. That we may be delivered. In Isaiah 54 verse 3 to 6, the Bible declares that Jesus Christ bore our griefs and sorrows on the cross. Bore our griefs and sorrows. As of a lamb without spot or blemish was crucified on that cross. For your sins are my sins that we may be set free. Isaiah says that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement that brought peace was upon him. And all who believe by his stripes today, we were healed. It was already done 2,000 years ago. That's when Christ came on earth to die for your sins and my sins. Was sacrificed as a lamb of the spot of blemish for you and I that we may be set free. Amen. And so before we worship, I want to invite, uh, um, normally we would do it at the end, but I want us to, to really understand. I know that you've already received that message. So the Bible declares that, um, according to the word of God, that we've all sinned, we fall short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. There is no one perfect outside of Jesus Christ. There's only one man that ever lived on earth that is perfect, and that is Jesus Christ without sin that's why the blood of jesus christ is what cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness and that's why god our heavenly father sent him for that very purpose that we may be set free i'm first john 3 verse 8 says that all who have sinned belong to the devil for the devil has sinned from the very beginning but that for this purpose the son of god came to destroy the works of the devil that's the reason why jesus christ came amen and so today, my friend, if you're online, you're listening. And those here, we've already, all of us, we've accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. But there's nothing wrong with recommitting. Because we are living in the last days. Where there's a lot of temptations, a lot of things going on. But online, if you have not yet received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, do not wait, my friend. Do not wait. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when you're going to die. Nobody knows when they're going to die. You want to be ready when that happens so that when you go before God, we are all going to go before God. You are ready. That you would have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. That if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, having believed in our hearts, it starts with the heart. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came from our Heavenly Father. Having repented from our sins. Believing that Christ, the identity of Christ as the Son of God. And who died on the cross over 2,000 years ago. Was buried, was raised from the dead on the third day. Once we believe that truth, my friend. We are born again. That's what the born again experience is. Your spirit is born again and reconnected to the Holy Spirit. Reconcile the Heavenly Father, having believed the truth, which is Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So it is only through Jesus Christ that we are reconciled to the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to give you a chance, my friend. Why do we have to believe in our hearts first? Well, we believe in our hearts unto righteousness. That's how we become righteous before God. Because once you believe the truth, the identity of the Son of God, and what Christ did on the cross as the Son of God, you partake of the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. 
Why do we have to confess with our mouth? We confess with our mouth unto salvation. We are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Amen? In other words, we shame the devil instead when we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. And so this is the purpose of his teaching and we're going to worship, but let us, I want to give you a chance, whoever has not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please do. And then we go into the teaching. Amen. There's blessings that come with accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There's healing, there's deliverance. Healing and deliverance, that's the children's bread. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Who promised that whoever receives him shall never hunger. Whoever believes in him shall never thirst. Hallelujah. And that if any man thirsts to come to him. He says, if any man thirsts, let him come to me. Whoever believes in me, out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. That's a pure river of life. That's the Holy Spirit. And so my friend, if you're ready. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. And you don't want to have death. Now, we're not talking about physical death. We're talking about eternal death. Hell. That is real. No one wants to go to hell. Eternal damnation. But here's the good news. That the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. And that is the good news. That is why Christ came. To die for your sins and my sins that we may be reconciled to heaven and father that we may have eternal life that we may not go to hell but have eternal life in christ jesus amen and so my friend i'm gonna give you a chance today if you're ready to confess jesus christ as your personal lord and savior and then we're going to go into the teaching because you want to understand why do you have to even congregate so before you understand that you want to accept christ as your personal lord and savior and then if you need help to find a church in your area, you can send us uh, a message by text 781-475-8262 and we can look up a church in your area and we can give you guidance. But pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to the right church because that is personal. Amen? And the Holy Spirit will speak to you uh, directly on what church to be a part of in your local area. Amen? So, if you're ready, my friend, to receive Christ, please repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I recognize that I'm a sinner. And that my sin separates me from you. Please forgive me, Heavenly Father. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is your Son, Heavenly Father. Who died on the cross was buried and was raised from the dead on the third day and today he lives seated at the right hand of God at your right hand Heavenly Father and I believe it with a hundred percent certainty and today I open my heart I repent of my sins I turn away from my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. Into my heart, take charge of my life. From this day forward. And I break every covenant with the devil, with the flesh, and with the world. I enter the blood of a new covenant with you Jesus as my Lord and Savior Jesus I thank you for the gift the free gift of your sacrifice on the cross I receive the free promise of the Holy Spirit by faith in Jesus mighty name amen my friend if you're a new believer we want to hear your testimony send us a text message uh, on this uh, page or you can call me or send me a text message on 781-475-8262 and uh, if you need prayer we can pray with you i pray for you agree with you in prayer give you direction on uh, how to find or where to find a church amen pray with you so the holy spirit will lead you uh, in that uh, in that um, 
endeavor to find a church. So we're going to continue and the topic, why do we congregate as a church? But let us first worship. Hallelujah. We're going to worship. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is already here as we worship the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you thanks and praise. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Can you just say thank you, Jesus? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Can you lift it and shout it? Thank you, Jesus. You know, we are signboards. We are signboards. God wants to showcase himself through us. And when he's done, what we shout is come and see. When God is Hallelujah. done, you can't keep it to yourself. You have to say, come and see. Come and see. He has been faithful. He has been good. He has been kind. He has been merciful. You are Jesus' signboard. Jesus' signboard. Jesus' signboard. And this song say, come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Take it now, we might. 
Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him thanks. Jesus save me. Jesus washed me. Jesus changed me. Jesus help me. Yes. Restore me. Jesus. 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 Jesus was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. And the chest came and upon peace stood upon him. By his stripes and he created and declared healing of you. In Jesus' mighty name. May the peace of God, the personal understanding, God, your heart of my hopes. In your name, Jesus. The peace of God. The peace of God over you and winner. Over you and winner, Philip. The peace of God over you, Ben. The peace of God over Jude. The peace of God over Michael, the peace of God over each and every one of us, the peace of God that passes all understanding, the peace of God over you online, in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Thank All you, over Lord. the earth, God is raising you, up Jesus. a new breed of wealth builders who use their money to shape the course of history. Oh, we serve a mighty God, we serve the King of glory. He's merciful, loving, and kind. It doesn't matter what you did in the past or what you've been doing. God is merciful. Jesus is merciful. Calling us to come boldly to the throne of grace to find a mercy and grace to help in this time of need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you thanks and praise, Lord. We honor and glorify you today. You are worthy to receive the honor and glory. Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us worship the King. His name is Jesus.
Somebody worship him. Thank you. He's the light in the darkness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you, thank you for the sacrifice you made of the cross. To the Lamb without spot of blemish. Thank you. Thank you for the precious blood that you shed on the cross, Lord. Thank you. Somebody call upon the name of Jesus.
with a general assembly of the church of the firstborn those greatly set in heaven to you God the judge of all we submit king of glory we come to the space of just men made perfect we come to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant whose blood of sprinkling speaks better things than that of Abel may your blood speak today for there is no other man that reconciles all men unto God except the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for the gift of life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. O Rabasata Rabakaya. O Rabasanda. Thank you, Holy Spirit. One more song as we go into the Word. Um, God bless you. Very good product. Don't miss out on it. Don't wait until the day you need it. Just now and now. of Judah, the Lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of us, who died and rose again. Yes, Jesus, 
Jesus is the King of Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
Arise, Jehovah, let your enemies be scattered. Arise, Jehovah, let your enemies be scattered. Let your enemies be scattered. Wherever they are, let the enemies be scattered. In Jesus' mighty name. Hey! to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in your midst. Praise the King of glory. That's why assembling is necessary. Never to forsake the assembling of the saints. Now, this is online, but even online, nothing can stop God. God is omnipotent, omnipresent everywhere. He is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all powerful, omnipresent, everywhere at the same time. Unlike Satan, who can never be everywhere at the same time. That's how powerful our God is over Satan. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So, what are the benefits of assembling? Number one, if you're writing down, we grow and mature. So, when you assemble, you grow and mature. So, when we gather in church, we grow the purpose is for us to grow and mature in the things of the lord amen? amen after being saved every christian begins a process of growth to bring him to maturity the lord does not expect us to be babies yes we start as babies but even in the nurture a baby never stays a baby you must grow from the milk of the word to eating solids well, maybe mash potato first, mash this and that, and then you eat the solid meat and the solid foods later as you mature. Hallelujah. So it is with a believer and the purpose of the fivefold ministry and why we congregate in a church is for the purpose that we may mature. Hallelujah. That we may grow spiritually from faith to faith, strength to strength, from glory to glory, into the glorious image of the Son of a living God. To be conformed to the image of the Son of God. As children of God. Amen? Amen. And that is the image of God. For Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Amen. The purpose why God sent Jesus Christ here on earth. To give us, I call it a blueprint, of how we ought to live as believers. Amen? Amen. And so that's why we cannot separate our lives from Christ because it's only through Christ that we can be conformed to that which God has purposed for us to be. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen? So an immature Christian has a worldly mentality. 
if you are immature then you would have a worldly mentality a fleshly mentality a carnal mind which is contrary to God the Lord needs us to mature so that we will be able to carry out the work of the ministry remember the fivefold ministry the purpose is for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ so that's the purpose of the fivefold ministry that we may grow amen now not to focus on the fivefold ministry but once you mature then you go on and move on to teach others amen so that's why the Lord does not expect us to be stunted in growth but rather to mature for this God gave these gifts the fivefold gifts that we talked about uh, the gift of apostles uh, prophets evangelists some pastors some teachers and each of these gifts have a specific purpose amen the apostle uh, is, is is there to build to, the visionary uh, and I don't want to go deep into the definition of what they do because that's so deep prophets they are the eye of the Lord in the church you don't want a church that does not see that is blind you want these gifts of the prophetic and now you can have a prophetic gift but there's a ministry of the prophet there's a ministry of an apostle the ministry of an evangelist all of us are called to preach the gospel but there is there are those that are especially called to the ministry office of evangelism as leaders in that area some pastors to pastor others now we all pastor each other in one way or another as fathers in a home we pastor our children and, and you know even our places of work you can be pastoring people but that's not necessarily your office but those that are called to the office of a pastor are especially called to nurture others and they have specific characteristics others teachers to teach others and again it is for the purpose of equipping the saints for the work of ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ amen these ministries teach and guide us through the process that will lead us to become more and more conformed to the image of the Son of God the image of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior hallelujah somebody not anybody's image not your pastor's image not your teacher's image that's why these fivefold ministry gifts and even the apostolic and prophetic which is the foundation upon which the church should be built is with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone so a house as you understand must have a cornerstone in order for it to be stable and so it is in the spiritual realm without Christ you cannot stand that's why Christ said I liken a wise man to he that builds their house on a rock though the rains beat up on it it will remain standing amen so that's why it is important that those who are called in these offices of the apostle the prophet the teacher evangelist pastors that they build on the foundation the cornerstone of Jesus Christ amen there is no other foundation uh, outside of Christ amen and so these ministries teach and guide us through the process that will lead us to become more and more conformed to the image of Christ and the Christian who does not congregate will never reach that maturity now you can say oh I can read on my own I can read the scripture on my own but sometimes you may not get everything again you may not tap into other people's gifts you may have a gift maybe you're a teacher and God has given you the anointing of a teacher and yes you learn the word but you not be able to tap into the other the prophetic the apostolic and had many other gifts not just this uh, uh, fivefold ministries there are people who have spiritual gifts uh, in the nine uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit God can give uh, gifts to anyone not necessarily in the fivefold ministry any believer amen to minister healing and deliverance to others uh, to speak in tongues to interpret tongues uh, what of wisdom what of knowledge so all these uh, 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 spiritual uh, gifts ministry gifts that we need as a body of Christ for the edification of the body of Christ amen so what are the other benefits of assembling we are instructed in the word in the word it is necessary for us to be rooted in the word and that's really Christ himself that's why I say that you cannot build outside of the cornerstone any house built without the cornerstone which is Jesus Christ that will crumble if it is built on Sunday it's gonna crumble you must build on the rock the rock of ages the rock of our salvation his name is Jesus Christ hallelujah somebody 
I'm going to ask you to read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, if you have your Bibles. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Right there. So you want to stay in, in, in the correct doctrine? You must stay in the word. You must ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation of that word. Because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And that's why you cannot read it with the eyes of religion. There's a lot of religion out there today, many denominations. You need the Holy Spirit now more than ever. Because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot get the revelation of the word. Amen? Amen. The revelation of Jesus Christ, because the word is Christ himself. Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God, who manifests in the flesh, is the word of God that was then the beginning, was with God, was God. So, Jesus Christ manifested in the flesh. Meaning, God spoke. God sent his word and he healed them and saved them from their destruction. Who? You and I. That word that was in the beginning was with God, was God, through which all things were created, manifested in the person of Jesus Christ, that we may be set free. And a lot of people don't understand that mystery. But really it is that. And you know, we cannot explain 100% what it means. But that is exactly what this is. The identity of Jesus Christ is that he was there in the beginning, was with God, was God, was one with God, in other words. Amen? God himself spoke that there will be a Lamb of God that will be slain for the forgiveness of our sins and that manifestation in the person of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, that died on the cross for your sins and my sins, is how we are reconciled to God. God himself reconciling us to himself through his word. Hallelujah. Through the Lamb of God. The manifestation of the word of God. Amen? Amen. Although men wrote the Bible, it was inspired by God's Holy Spirit. So right there. No man wrote without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in this Bible that we read. Man, all was an inspiration by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are people who made mistakes, they were complaining. Yes, there were some things, but even those things were written for us, for our admonition, to understand that men are, can make mistakes. Amen? And that's why it's important to read the Bible with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, to know what God is saying, even in the lives of, of uh, these men, uh, you know, that, that had their own uh, weaknesses, failures. But they wrote what God told them. And even in those stories, we see God moving. Amen? To know God's word is to know his written will. When we don't know the word, the enemy quickly brings confusion and deception to blur us, to rob us of the blessing and separate us from God. Therefore, every Christian must know the word. We are instructed in the word of the Lord in the church. If we do not congregate, we risk falling into deception. In these last days, there are many people that have given up on Christ. Even congregating because they have fallen into the deception of Satan. That which was even prophesied, there will be a great falling away. A great falling away. Apostasy. You don't want to be a part of the apostasy. Apostasia. That's a demonic spirit of the end times. So how do we uh, uh, maintain our faith in Christ? How are we sustained? It is through the Holy Spirit, without a doubt. And even as we congregate with other believers, we are edified. Amen? So, others reach salvation. In Luke 15 verse 7 says, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents the purpose why we congregate is that there's some people who come in the church who do not know christ yes we would preach the gospel to those people that come in the church for them to receive christ amen for them to be healed to be delivered so the church as you've heard or the house of god is for purposes of prayer christ said my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for worship, for sharing the word, for people to be healed and delivered and be set free. 
So that when you go to congregate in a church, there's going to be healing and deliverance. People are going to lay hands on you. Men of God, women of God are going to lay hands on you and you'll be healed. You'll be delivered. Or even impartation of a gift. Impartation of an... Uh, 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 really, the impartation is not that the gift comes from man, from man. It comes through the Holy Spirit using men. A lot of people don't understand that. And there's a reason why God does it that way. Amen? Not to... Uh, uh, to to uh, glorify man, but to glorify himself through men. Chosen vessels. They're those who uh, uh, are called to win souls. So winning souls for the kingdom is the great commission Christ left for all of us, his followers. God loves souls. He does not want anyone to be lost. The Bible declares that God does not desire that anybody perishes, but that all come to full repentance. That's why Christ came, to call sinners to repentance. Today, the word repentance is, not many people want to hear that word, but yet, it is exactly what Christ came to do. In fact, John the Baptist said, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Those very words that John the Baptist spoke, even Christ spoke, repent, for the kingdom of God is here. Amen? It is here. Amen? And that's what Christ came to do to bring the kingdom of God in us. Ask us to pray when we pray, even as we honor and glorify God. Heavenly Father, honor and glory be to your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Amen? Amen. But repentance is necessary in order for us to access the kingdom of God. Without repentance, meaning turning away from sin, we cannot be reconciled to God. Because you're saying, okay, I want to stay with my sin. I don't want to repent. No, we should repent. Turn away from sin. If you're walking in any as in sin, in any given area, you ought to repent and say, Lord, first of all, forgive me. I repent. I turn away. Or if you're struggling, you ask the Lord to help you. And you'll come out of sin. Amen? And God is merciful, loving, and kind. And he will forgive us. That's why the blood of Jesus Christ is there for us. So the reality is that many people die without knowing Jesus though and go to hell because no one preaches to them. That's why it is necessary for us to preach the gospel. When we come, we get a church becomes where we can take the people in our social circles to hear the gospel and be saved. If we don't congregate, we have nowhere to bring those people to know and experience God. Some are family members, you may have a family member you hear the word of God, how to reach souls, how to uh, go out and minister. If you're called to be an evangelist, all of us are called to preach the gospel. The scripture is very clear. Go and preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. What I'm preaching, I learned from church, from congregating. It did not come, you know, out of, well, of course, the Holy Spirit taught me as well. But when you congregate, you get these gifts you tap into these gifts and then you get to know what you are called to do hallelujah somebody i'm going to ask namoli to read romans 10 verse 9 to 17. no 9 to uh to 13 and betsy will read 14 up to 17. romans 10 verse 9 to 13. let's go into the scripture if you have your bibles online Go to Romans 10, verse 9 to 17. The importance of us preaching the gospel. But how are you going to preach the gospel um, to lost souls if you're not called? How are they even going to hear the gospel if they're not preached to those who need to hear the gospel? So that's the purpose of why we come we get. So we get to know how to preach the gospel and how to reach lost souls so that they may be saved. Romans 10 verse 9 to 13. As we close, we are about to close. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes 
on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distraction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Namoli. God bless you abundantly. In verse 14 to 17, Betty, as we close. How then can they call upon the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? But not your but not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Because finally, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen, amen. Thank you, Betty. So you understand then that you cannot go and preach unless you are sent. But how are you going to be sent? If you have not learned how to preach the gospel, you have not learned how to reach out uh, for lost souls. When we congregate, we get to learn how to reach out to others. In other words, we hear the word of God ourselves, the word of truth. Once we hear the word of truth, then the truth is ingrained in our hearts. And then we get to preach the truth to those lost souls. Now, I'm going to start from verse 20. It says, how then shall, well, it starts with us being saved, born again. Amen? And here it says, that whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. If you believe in Christ, you will not be put to shame. You shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So it starts with you to believe. And then, there are people who have not yet believed. But how are they going to call on in the name of the Lord? if nobody has preached to them so that's why in verse 14 it says how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard so there has to be a pre preaching of the gospel now some of them will reject the gospel it's not up to you israel some in israel rejected the gospel only a few accepted the gospel even today few have accepted the gospel few have many have rejected it so it says and how shall they hear without a preacher so there has to be someone to preach the gospel so that be, there be no excuse that you've not heard the gospel even you who are online so listen to this and how shall they preach unless they are sent so you have to be sent you do not send yourself out you have to be sent in other words they train you that's the purpose of uh, uh attending um uh, congregating in a church you are trained on how to do what God has called you to do before you go out. Amen? That is how beautiful God is, how God has done it. And through these ministry gifts and all the gifts and the anointings that the Lord has given us through the great men and women of God. How, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. We are called to preach the gospel of peace. What is that gospel peace? It is Jesus Christ, Him crucified and raised from the dead. Our peace, wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement that brought peace was upon Him by His stripes. Today, all of us are healed. Hallelujah, somebody. He is our peace. And not only does He set us free, He wants us to go and preach the gospel peace. Once we've received the peace, to share the gospel of peace hallelujah somebody Amen. to bring the glad tidings of good things and that's what we bring you today my friend that you may be set free in jesus mighty name for them faith comes a hearing him by the word of god now some do not hear the gospel they reject it as isaiah wrote um uh, uh, spoke lord who has believed our report some will not believe the report but it's not up to you if you're preaching the gospel if people don't believe the report you preach anyhow i always use the example of uh, uh noah and we are in the last days where christ said just as it was in the days of noah so shall it be at the return of the son of man as it was in the days of lot so shall it be at the return of the son of man 
Noah was preaching to millions and millions and millions. Only eight souls were saved. That reminds me of Jesus Christ's words that the narrow gate is not taken by many. Not many want to take the narrow gate. Many want to go by the wide gate which leads to destruction. Few want to go by the narrow gate which leads to life. And it's difficult, yes, but it calls for patience and the only way we can overcome is through patience. Through the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit are we able to overcome and finish the race. My friend, I'm going to stop there. We thank God for his loving kindness and tender mercies which endure forever. So when we stop congregating, this is just the takeaway. You become spiritually called. You don't want to be spiritually called. When you turn away from God's house, you return to acting as before in a carnal way, in carnality. Lying, adultery, stealing if you're a thief, drinking. I've seen people who go back to drinking had stopped drinking, but they go back to drinking. That's the falling away. Why Christ said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. And said, remember Lot's wife who looked back and turned into a pillar of salt? That's backsliding. You don't want to backslide. That's why you understand the presence of God. A person who turns away from Christ loses the fear of God and easily sins again. The enemy takes advantage of that person. That's why in the scripture says, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his device, devices. So we are at a watch, lest Satan should take advantage. How do we watch? By congregating, by encouraging one another, congregating with other believers, that we may be encouraged. Amen? A good example is what happened in, during COVID. So many people have given up on church because of COVID, and they no longer congregate. But we should congregate, my friend. Don't stay in your house. Go out and congregate with believers. In Jesus' mighty name. And you're going to be blessed. My friend, we're going to give to the work of this ministry. This is the pure river of the water of life. And we are under King Jesus' ministry. This house of peace is. Uh, and, and so, uh, we are not a standalone uh, ministry. We are under the King Jesus' ministry ministry which is out in Miami and Dallas King Jesus Dallas and so that is our covering our pastors are Pastor Daniel and Carolina Sandoval in this ministry amen and it is in Dallas um, and so yeah but we congregate we have a church the Lord gave us here to congregate with other believers so we should always congregate with other believers amen so even though your church is maybe too far off you should never forsake congregating with other believers who are a like mind. Amen? Who believe as you do. Who believe in the fivefold ministry for our case. Who believe in all the things that the Lord says to believe. His word, according to his word. The full counsel of God. Hallelujah. Samba. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Be blessed abundantly in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Lord of Lords, Yahweh and Omega, the beginning and end, the first and the last, who is, was, and is to come. But if you want to give to the work of this ministry, my friend, I want to give you an invitation. And this money goes, whatever you give to the work of this ministry, it goes to the King Jesus Dallas branch, under which we are directly, uh, uh, you know, covered. Text the word give, G I V E, to the number 1833. Three. So, area code 1833 921 6964. And text the word give. And as the Holy Spirit leads you, you can give. Now, tithes go to your local church. So, if this is not your local church, I should say this very clearly. Tithes should go to your local church, your home church. You can give an offering of any amount as the Holy Spirit leads you. And the Lord is going to bless you abundantly. We're going to stand on this word in 2 Timothy, uh, not 2 Timothy, in Galatians 6 7. Sorry. 
Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So, you've heard that those who sow sparingly shall reap sparingly. Those who sow bountifully shall reap bountifully. So, I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to give abundantly, bountifully, and you're going you're gonna to reap bountifully. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, so be it. I gave you the information, uh, and I'm, I'm going to pray for those tithes and offerings. For those of you who are part of this church, maybe you're listening in from um, somewhere, and you go to King Jesus, you can give your tithes to this uh, church. But otherwise, if you're not a part of this church, go to your local church. That's where you give your tithes. You can give an offering of any amount as the Holy Spirit leads to this ministry. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies which endure forever for each and every one that is giving into the work of this ministry. Lord, that you bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ to prosper in all things, be in good health, even as their souls prosper. I declare it in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they be healed and be delivered and set free from any kind of demonic oppression or repression or obsession in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to pray in the next one minute, two minutes as I close. For anyone who has any kind of sickness or disease to be healed, to be set free, to be delivered in Jesus' mighty name. I cover you in the precious, precious blood of Jesus. In the name that is above our names, the name of Yeshua, Hamashir, so be it. Christ who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought peace was upon him by his stripes. Be healed, be delivered, be set free in Jesus' mighty name. So be it. Amen. God bless you abundantly. I'm going to close uh, with this benediction. May the God of peace himself sanctify you and I holy in spirit, in soul, and in our bodies that at the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we may be found blameless. A church without spot or wrinkle. A glorious church for Christ is coming by faith. Glorious church without spot or wrinkle. A spotless bride and as the Lord continues to do a work in us that we may be found among the wheat and other tares when he comes among the sheep and other goats among the words and not the foolish virgins in Jesus mighty name and everybody said amen God bless you abundantly to the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. And everybody say, Amen. God bless you.